Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Brookings Harbor and all the fishing boats at sea. I'm Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. And, and this, this is, is the Insider, Insider Report. Report. So let your ears do the walking as we fill you in on what's going on in the Brookings Harbor area and beyond. beyond. Well, hello, 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 and welcome to this week's show that keeps you in the know. Hello, Cat. How was your hello, weekend this Bruce. week? <laughs> you know, um, oh, it was productive. I, I actually like got a lot of podcast stuff related stuff done oh, for, okay. for the film festival. So I got some new episodes sent off to them for that. So hopefully they'll be able to start running those again and uh, just... Golly, my house is so clean. Oh yeah, it's, I, you can just you can see the slow smile spreading across my face. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. So I did like a purge of some much needed, outdated stuff in my closet. Oh, that's funny. I'm becoming a bit of a clothes horse in my 30s. I don't know. Like, oh, I need yeah. to. I kind of need to like like dial back on the on the trips to the <laughs> thrift store because like it's it's getting crowded in there. Or, so. or or take a trip with you when you take something with you I when know, you go if you're going to replace it. Yeah, yeah. Rotate or something. Yeah, figure yeah. something out. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about you and Junior? How was your weekend? Oh, it was a good weekend. He went over to a friend's house and hung out uh, Saturday night and everything. But, you know, it, it happens once in a blue moon. I even have to pinch myself once in a while and make sure that it's correct. But I get this week where it's like between, you know, where I deliver the papers and get that all done. And then I get this free week, yeah, which I have no idea what to do with <laughs> being the person that I am. So uh -huh. I had that free week this last week and I did the show and I realized, wow. I don't have to work on the paper till next week. Right. I don't have to do sales or anything till next week. Uh -huh. I got nothing. But I have to sit there and keep checking myself and looking right. around. And when I sit back and enjoying something like a movie or whatever, it's mm -hmm. weird during this week because I still think that there's something I got to be doing. <laughs> but but when I can actually settle myself, yeah, it was one of those weeks. Right. Yeah. Well, you're like, I think I have. I think I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm, I'm good. I'm I'm paranoid that it's not. The yeah. Yeah. Time. Like, yeah. Watching a movie. Can I enjoy this movie right now? Or is there something I should mm. be doing? And then I look at my stuff and I go, no, I'm groovy. I'm cool. Is Story of my on life. The calendar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's weird when I have an off week. Now, this week is going to be busy as all get yeah, out. Like, know. it's normal. It's back to normal, you know, and everything. But I love having those week out. So oh, yeah. this weekend was the last of those. Mm -hmm. Got to watch me some football and NASCAR and my usual fun stuff there. Yeah, so I got to relax, enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So, yep, yep, yep. But like I said, this week will be back on like Donkey Kong, so it'll be cool. So I got to enjoy those weeks when they happen. Sometimes it takes a couple of days before it clicks in that I actually have that happen. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what my our weekend was like this weekend. Hope everybody out there got out and had some fun because there's a lot of stuff going on. It's amazing how this month I'm getting ready for stuff for November, you know, for the paper. and. Mm -hmm. We're busy. There is a lot of stuff going on in November, yeah. too. You yeah, know, it's not absolutely. really hard to fill the paper up. Yeah. So, yeah, I hope you all get out there and having some fun with us. And the weather's doing really good. It's bouncing around. We've got a, somebody called it Bipole Oregon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're having that. We're having that little, what's it going to be like today? Should I need a jacket and a rain you know, coat or... Just it's take gonna be everything. like 80 it's... degrees, you know, <laughs> 90 degrees. Exactly. Yep. So, anyways... Before we get going here, we'd like to thank Oregon South Coast Fishermen, otherwise known as the Castaways, Just the Jeweler, and Oregon Coast VIP Marketing for sponsoring the Insider Report. And if you'd like to sponsor the Insider Report or one of the other fine shows here at KCIW, you just go to kciw.org and you will be on your way. Speaking of those Oregon South Coast Fishermen, we've got our favorite fisherman with the Fishing Report, David Keene. That's right. Hey, Dave, now you just told me before we went here, we want to give a Leonard past this last weekend. Oh, I wanted to let the audience know. Yeah, yeah. Leonard, one of the South Coast Oregon fishermen, a great guy, helped Junior catch his first, the largest fish at that, when he did his third grade fishing trip up there to the lake, you know, and everything. It was like, he was a good guy. Yeah, yeah. that's a, it's a, quite a loss. It, it was very sudden, but he was in his boat fishing, actually landed a halibut uh, last Sunday and uh, collapsed right after that and uh, was not revived. Um, but the Celebration of Life service actually has been set uh, for October 26th oh, so, here yeah. at the Har Calvary Heritage, October 26th. So yeah. word will get out on that, you know, as okay. far as getting it out on the street. But thank you for that. Thought no, no, we did, you know, when you told me that, he was a good guy. Mm -hmm. and, you know, he came on and filled the fishing report yep. once in a while, yep. too, with us. Yeah, we were always talking yeah. fish, that's so, for sure. Uh, he'll be missed, yeah. that's for sure. Control. Okay, well, that, well, thank you for that. Fish report. Well, let's see. We've got uh, ocean in the ocean. Bottom fish is open right now along with Pacific halibut. And that's about it, other than crab. Um, however, crab will close on October 16th, which is Wednesday, 
and it'll be closed all the way through November 30th. So people better get out there. Yeah, they are right now. I got a lot of friends out there. there. Yep, grab it today and today and tomorrow, and just the two days left. But that closes. Uh, In the Chetco estuary, you probably have seen a lot of boats still out there trolling around. Yep. Uh, Salmon are being caught. In fact, uh, quite a few large hatchery fish are showing up now, which is a, a good sign for our hatchery program. So, uh, but in the estuary, you can keep one wild per day and five for the season. However, you can have two adult salmon, but one wild, one hatchery, or two hatchery. You can keep up to five jacks, but if you kept your two adult salmon, you cannot fish for jacks then. It's, there's all the rules. You really need to be in the know because they have been patrolling and issuing citations, which is good. Enforcement's yeah. good. Oh, when they come in, they're right there ready, waiting for you. Uh-huh. Waiting so, for you. Yeah. <laughs> so those are the rules on that. But also another thing to know in the Chetco River, the above River Mile 2.2, it's called River Mile 2.2. It's up near at River's Edge RV Park where those power lines cross. Above right. that, you, it's bobber fishing only in the Chetco River until November 3rd. And a reason I bring that up is because now the salmon are, are, are starting to move up river. And so the drift boat fishing and bank fishing will, will pick up in that in that time frame. But people need to remember it's bobber fishing only rules. Okay. A specific way to, to fish for salmon during that time period until November 3rd. So oh, okay. you really need to check out the the regs on that because they they're very specific with a diagram and what you can and cannot do. Yeah, if you don't pay attention, they'll make sure. Oh you, yeah, you will be paying attention. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, step activities again. Our group, the Oregon South Coast Fishermen, is a salmon trout enhancement program. Step, and we work closely closely with ODFW for a lot of activities. Uh, broodstock collection for both salmon and steelhead, putting the uh, smolt back in the systems. Um, coded wire tag program we have going right now. And what that is, if you catch a hatchery fish in the estuary, we ask that they submit the snout of the fish because inside the snout there could be a coded wire tag, which is valuable data for us to collect. Wow. So we have that program going on right now. Uh, We're going to be starting our Ferry Creek program uh, in about a week. Actually, we'll get our first shipment of about 20,000 salmon smolt that we'll put into Ferry Creek on October 23rd, and there they're acclimated for two weeks before we release them into the main stem of the Chetco River. We had over 100,000 Chinook salmon smolt just put into the river last week oh, up man. at Ferry Creek, or not Ferry Creek, but at River's Edge with another 100,000 on its way to put that into the system. And this is all to enhance fishing opportunity, not just for us recreational fishermen, but also commercial fishermen. Right. And then uh, where do we get these salmon smolt from? Well, we're going to have our first salmon rodeo. Um, we call it that, but it's uh, uh, it's the salmon broodstock collection program where we'll net the adult salmon in the Chetco River. Volunteers help ODFW do that. We get the fish into a truck. They're trucked to Elk River Hatchery where they're spawned, and then the salmon smolt are raised for a year before we bring them back to the Chetco River. Yeah, because lasso them is no good. <laughs> <laughs> they're too slippery yep so that's a lot of activity yeah. coming up for our group and we have a meeting on wednesday uh, october 16th at, when this airs it'll be this wednesday october 16th there we go this day. Yeah, so, so, so we'll be saying yeah 5 30 yeah, yeah, p.m yeah, yeah. at the jet go library there you go yeah. we'll be uh, having our our club meeting with a lot of things to talk about some fun stuff right on right on you know i thought about it when those guys are all sitting out there in the boats and there's like 10 to 15 20 fishermen sitting out there in a little area right together you know to the fish, it must be like a, a, a buffet. It true. They must be cruising and, around going, "I got a choice of whatever I want to eat." You know, I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And something I just heard too. There's these. They call them live scans. I think it is where there's instruments that they can see live images of the salmon while they're trolling there. Oh man! And they're passing on. They're seeing lots of fish, but they aren't biting right now. Oh, or very rarely you might see one that is caught. So it's interesting that they're there, and for whatever reason, you know, the bite's not on. We think it's they're just waiting to get a river and spawn. I mean, they're oh, okay. the time is right. It's now. Right. We need. We need. I'm hungry now. I'm hungry. I'll eat later. <laughs> <laughs> they got to get a river and get get it get it done. You know. Yeah. So they're they're waiting for some fresh water. So once that happens, I think they'll be yeah. shooting up the river. Then it'd be chili dogs all around. Yes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and bears, lions, and tigers, and bears like, eating right. the carcasses. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, well, thanks. It's always a pleasure having you on board, man, and coming up with the fishing report. So, yeah, there you go. Thanks a lot, Dave. And until next time, uh, yeah, 
happy fishing out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, I do like to fish, as you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Thanks for stay by the rules. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks, Kat. Good to see you all. Thanks, Dave. Right. Okay. Well, right on. Always good to get the fishing report there. Uh, yeah, we might as well start getting into this stuff. Uh, meeting the potatoes here with some music yeah. schedule going on. Back half of October here, starting things off at the Elk Valley Casino on the 19th. They're going to have a stand-up comedy event with Jason Collings. The doors for that will open at 7.30. The show starts at 8. And on the 26th, they've got Cosmic Bingo happening. Doors for that opens at 6. The game itself starts at 8. Yeah, and then Cisco will be playing on the 19th and the 26th at the Brookings Harbor Farmer's Market from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And on the 30th, you'll be at Check Co Activity Center, 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And then the band Bloodline is playing on the 18th of October at Checo Brewing Co. Music there starts at 6 o'clock. And on the 25th, they'll be at the Inateca in Crescent City starting at 8. Yeah, and then Mike Powell, he'll be playing on the 20th and the 27th at Augustino's, uh, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Yes, and the Checo Effect is playing on the 19th at Misty Mountain Brewing from 6 to 8 p.m. Yep, and then the Mighty Steelheads on the 18th, you'll catch them at Porta Pints in Crescent City at 7.30. All right, and we've got a fuller lineup of music happening at Misty Mountain Brewing. Music there generally running from 6 to 8 p.m. On the 18th, they have Reggae with Gabriel Cosas. On the 19th, again, the Checo Effect... On the 25th, they'll host Lawn Goddard. On the 26th, Two Time Nelson. And on the 30th, they'll have Angelic Noise, a celebration of Misty Mountain Brewing's 10th anniversary. Yeah, and then uh, Rogue Strings will be playing on the 26th at Sea Star Bar and Grill in Gold Beach from 7.30 to 10.30. And once again here at the Inateca in Crescent City, on the 25th, they're going to host Bloodline. They're playing at 8 p.m. Yeah, that's it for the music. For we'll October. More, yeah, for October, I should <laughs> say. Yes, yeah, so I'll give them another list next week or two. It keeps turning. Yes, mm-hmm. it does. We'll keep turning. Yeah. So if you have something out there that's music or you're with a band and you want to get it announced on the radio or in the Inside of Southern Oregon newspaper, all you got to do is send me your info at captaincurry541 at gmail.com and I will get it taken care of. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And let's turn our attention over to events happening at the Checo Library, located at 405 Alder Street in Brookings. We'll start things off with some weekly events that happen over there. On Tuesdays at 11 a.m., they have story time that features stories, songs, and games for young children. And on 1.30 p.m. on Tuesdays, they've got a free chair yoga class. This is a beginner's yoga class that focuses on seated positions. And then on Wednesdays at 1.30 p.m., they've got after-school activities. This is free homework help, a creation station, and snacks for older kids and tweens. And then on Thursdays at 1.30 p.m., they have another chair yoga class. This is a beginner's yoga class. Again, it focuses on seated positions. And then at 4 o'clock on Thursdays, they've got more after-school activities. Again, free homework help, STEM projects and games, and snacks for older kids and tweens on Thursdays. Also on Thursdays at 5.30 p.m., they've got a weekly Easy Flow Yoga class. This is a yoga class for beginners that includes standing poses, and they note that it is highly recommended that participants be able to comfortably get up and down from the floor for this one. And then coming up in monthly and special events at the library, on Wednesday, October 16th at noon, they have Lifestyle Medicine. You can join OSU Associate Professor Stephanie Polizzi for free monthly community classes on health, nutrition, and wellness. And this month's topic for the class is Scary Foods. And then on October 22nd at 5.30, that's a Tuesday, it's one of their game nights that's hosted at Checo Brewing Co. So this is an open game night that features games from the Checo Library's board game collection. It's hosted at Checo Brewing Co. on Railroad Street. You're invited to try a game from the library or bring one of your favorites to share with friends. This is a free and fun opportunity to meet and connect with other board game enthusiasts in the community. And there's plenty of table space to spread out. And kids are welcome at these game nights, but they do have to be accompanied and supervised by an adult guardian. Game nights happen every second and fourth Tuesday of the month. And then coming up for book clubs in October, on the 17th at 5.30 p.m., they have their monthly Pub Grub Book Club. This is a casual book club for adult fans of graphic novels. It takes place off-site at Misty Mountain Brewing in downtown Brookings. And for more information about book clubs, programs, events, services, you can visit checkolibrary.org and check out their events calendar. You can give them a follow on Facebook for updates, or you can give them a call at 541 469-7738. Four six nine seven seven three eight. Okay, hey David, it's Haunted Mansion is running every weekend until November first. You can see their new downtown location is ten seventy two Third Street in Crescent City for a fun night of screams and scares. They have a sensory walk, formerly known as Small Scares. They'll be open all operating nights from six to six forty five p.m. And tickets will only be available for the stand 
line at the door. They have a low sensory experience with no strobes, smoke, low volume, house lights will be on with no actors, perfect for looky-loos and scaredy-cats. Big Scares is a full sensory experience run nightly. Tickets are at the door, Fridays and Saturdays and Sundays. The sensory walk runs from 6.45, that's for the, the younger ones, so they don't get all scared. And then the Big Scares comes on at 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. So that's how that is. All right, very cool, very mm-hmm. cool. And then now it's time for quotes from famous people with Cousin Bruce. That's right. Hey, here are a few quotes from the late great musician extraordinaire and, of course, co-founder of the Beatles, John Lennon. He was born on October 9th, 1940. And he says, life is what happens while you are busy making other plans. He goes, we got this gift of love, but love is like a precious plant. You can't just accept it and leave it in the cupboard or just think it's going to get on by itself. You got to keep watering it. You got to really look after it and nurture it. And he says, if someone thinks that love and peace is a cliche that must have been left behind in the 60s, that's his problem. Love and peace are eternal. And last but not least, he says, you don't need anybody to tell you who you are or what you are. You are what you are. Hope you enjoyed this week's quotes from John Lennon with Cousin Bruce. Till next week, hey, have a great one. Yeah, great. Cool. I like that. Yeah, you are who you is. I, mean, I like it. it. I like it. Keep it simple, you know. <laughs> That's right. All right. Hey, St. Timothy's Episcopal Church, located at 401 First Street in Brookings, is presenting a performance by acoustic soloist Terry Robb. This is happening on the 18th of October at 7 p.m. Terry Robb is a fingerstyle guitarist, singer, composer, arranger, and record producer. His work is featured in Hollywood films, documentaries, and biographies, including Game of Thrones, The Horse Whisperer, and Dance of Death, The Life of John Fahey, American Guitarist. He's associated with the American primitive guitar genre through his collaborations with Fahey. In his multi-decade career, Rob has released 15 albums as a solo artist and has performed at festivals and concert halls across the United States, Canada, and Europe. And for more information about this artist, you can visit terryrob.com. And tickets are $20 at the church. Uh, you can get them also at the door on the day of the concert. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, and then, hey, we've got Chet Pelican and Players. Paranormal Haunted House. <laughs> this is located at 97900 Shopping Center Avenue in Harbor. This is never going to get old, that one. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, <laughs> and it starts on the 18th, 19th, then it goes the 24th, 25th, 26th, and 27th, and the 31st, and then it runs November 1st and 2nd. The times are 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. every night. Adults are $15. Students are $10. The entrance to this is next to the DMV. And yeah, if I remember what it sounded like last year, it was like a great success at the new place. So, nice. yeah, it'll be very really nice. Good. Good. Cool. cool. Mm-hmm. Hey, Curry Public Library in Gold Beach is going to be presenting a free screening of Walt Disney's Hocus Pocus. This is happening on the 19th of October. It's going to open for people to come in at 6.30 p.m. The film itself starts at 7.00. And they're also going to have a costume contest, and it looks like a trivia competition. How cute is that? (laughs) Yeah, very cool. Mm -hmm. Hey, Calvary Chapel in Gold Beach, 29935 Harbor Way, is having a first responders appreciation dinner. This is coming up on the 19th, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Police, fire, EMS, sheriff are all welcome, all first responders. Please give them an opportunity to serve you is what they say. And if you're out there and you know any first responders, give them a clue on this is going on up there in Gold Beach. Yeah, getting something, give them back. There you go. Very nice, very nice. Hey, Halloween events are just happening all over the place, including a screening of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. This is taking place at Checo Brewing Co. at 830 Railroad Street in Brookings. It's happening on the 26th of October, a Saturday, and the screening starts at 9 p.m., This is a special screening of Rocky Horror Picture Show, one night only. There's limited seating available, so they are encouraging folks to get tickets early. Proceeds benefit Southern Oregon Coast Pride. There will be an additional fundraiser. Prop bags with all the good stuff to throw at the screen will be sold at the door. Oh, yeah. That's what we talked about last week. It was like, yeah, if you haven't experienced one of these, be prepared to get crazy, cosplay, the whole nine yards, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. What do you suggest people bring? Oh, well, I mean, like, uh, umbrellas are always good. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I can do that. If you're not sure why, just bring one anyway. You'll figure it out. Um, Let's see. In those prop bags, I know they're going to have things like newspapers, and they're going to have things like things to throw at the... Yeah, Yeah, this is all ties into things that happen in the movie that you can use and throw at the screen or throw at your friends, whatever you want to do. 
Um, the cosplay of the characters from the film is very common. I'm going to be seeing about going either as Columbia or Magenta myself. So yeah. <laughs> I'll be dressing up. Um, but it's a unique experience. It's a fun experience. I think I saw it for the first time like when I was in high school and it, about 20 years ago now at yeah. this point, you know. And gosh, it was wild. And it's one of the silliest things that you can possibly experience. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, fun, fun stuff. Fun it's, stuff all it's around. It's been a long time since I've been to, I, I went to a couple of them back in the day and everything in different states and different mm-hmm. cities and stuff. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it sounds like they're doing it just right here, just right. like I always saw yeah. them. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of big cities, it's a big Halloween tradition for folks who aren't on like the trick or treat rounds and stuff. So, you know, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm one of them back up in the last row. I like to be up in the last couple rows so uh-huh. I can observe the whole thing going. Oh, yeah. Watch it. Yeah, yeah. It's just because yeah. it's amazing. Just, oh. you know, we watch the movie, but to watch the crowd is like mm-hmm. the big thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, always fun. Mm-hmm. All right on. Hey, so we got Legends of Arcade is present. Well, tis the season. They're having a Halloween party. Go figure. On the 26th from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. for this all-ages Halloween party. That's all the info I got on it. So there you go. It's an arcade. But hey, yeah. arcade, Halloween. Yeah. Poop. And a party. Go together. There you go. <laughs> Hey, the Curry County Chamber of Commerce is presenting their Curry County Candy Map. You can join in on the small business candy map fun. So the Curry County Chamber of Commerce is announcing their Halloween Candy Map event in collaboration with local small businesses. And on Thursday, October 31st, that's Halloween, they'll be handing out Halloween candy and celebrating in style. And they're doing a shout out for all small businesses in Curry County. It's your chance to be part of the Halloween magic Get your business on the Halloween map and join the festivities. They're encouraging folks when they sign up to host a sale, organize an open house, just be creative and have fun, and maybe serve some refreshments. They're inviting folks to help make this Halloween unforgettable for the whole community. Don't miss out on this opportunity to showcase your business and connect with local customers. And to participate and get on that candy map, you can contact them at Curry County Chamber of Commerce at gmail.com. They're looking forward to seeing all the spooky and fun ways local businesses will celebrate. That's right. And then, of course, we got the Crescent City CHP 6th Annual Trunk or Treat at the CHP parking lot at 1630 Summer Lane in Crescent City on the 31st, 5.30 p.m. to 7.30. It's a fun and secure setting to trick or treat. To reserve a space or questions for candy donations, you can call Pete Gonzalez, 707-218-2000. I remember the last few years or whatever. We've announced this a couple times. Oh, yeah. A trunk or treat's always, it's it's a classic at this stage. All right. Yeah. Well, hey, now it's time for a bit of real history with Bushwhacker Bruce. Right. Good day, Kat. Good day, mates. Bushwhacker Bruce here, and welcome to this week's bit of real history for your knowledge pleasure. Did you know... That Disney's Frozen Elsa doll that was gifted for Christmas in 2013 in the Houston area seemingly became haunted? What's true? And here's the story. The doll recites phrases from the movie Frozen and saying, Let it go, when a button on its necklace was pressed. For two years it did it in English, Mother Emily Madonia said. In 2015 it started doing its alternating between Spanish and English. There wasn't a button to change these, it was just random. Well, the family has owned the doll for more than six years and never changed its batteries. The mother says the doll would randomly begin to speak and sing, even with its switch turned off. Well, the family decided to throw the creepy doll out in December 2019. Weeks later, they found it inside a bench in their living room. The kids insisted they didn't put there, and the mother believed them because, according to her, they wouldn't have dug up through the garbage outside. Well, at that point, Elsa ceased to sing the English rendition of Let It Go, altogether speaking only Spanish when pressed. The family then double-bagged the bizarre doll and placed it at the bottom of their garbage can, which was taken out on garbage day. They went on a trip shortly after, but when they returned, Elsa too had come back and was waiting in the backyard of their home. This time, the family mailed Elsa to a family friend in Minnesota who taped the haunted doll to the front bumper of his truck. Doesn't seem to have made its way back to Houston yet. Hope you enjoyed this week's bit of spooky history with your truly Bushwhacker Bruce. Till next time, always keep it real.
Get out of here with those doll stories. Is that freaky no, or what? I, I read that. I'd like, like oh. I don't like dolls. They creep me out. Like <laughs> we talked about it last week doing a little creepy version, mm. and I was like, saw that one right off the bat, and I was like, oh, and it's the frozen Elsa it's, doll. So mm-hmm. everybody know it. You know, so they'll know exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, who I'm talking. Nice following you around the room. <laughs> just, and, and the broken talk to you saying, and then it plays on repeat, but you're pretty sure it's haunt. No. Yeah. Just no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, hey, get it out of here. <laughs> All right. So there's going to be a chamber mixer coming up at none other than the 100.7 FM KCIW offices. That's Curry Coast Community Radio. And exciting news, KCIW is thrilled to be hosting this upcoming Curry County Chamber of Commerce mixer on the 17th of October, running from 530 to 7 p.m. They're opening up the microphones for a unique opportunity. You can record your very own station ID. These legal identifications air every hour, and they'd love to rotate through voices from our local community. Picture this. I'm Joe from Joe's Fab Shop on Checo Avenue, and you're listening to KCIW LP 100.7 FM, broadcasting from beautiful Brookings, Oregon. It's a fun way to promote your business and connect with our listeners. Refreshments will be served. Bring your business cards and $10 cash for the 50-50 raffle. The winner of this raffle is going to receive 50% of the prize money generated by raffle ticket sales. Coming up, 17th of October, that's Thursday, coming up soon, 5.30 to 7, the next chamber mixer at KCIW's office. For the address for that, they are located at 625 Checo Avenue, Suite 100, just down the stairs from Black Trumpet, next to Misty Mountain Brewing. That's right. Mm -hmm. Another fun event with KCIW in the chamber. Cool. Oh, yeah. Very good stuff. Always a good time. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeedy. All right. Hey, Curry County presents a Halloween block walk at the courthouse. Candy is handed out by each department located in the courthouse. This will be happening on Halloween, the 31st, the 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. And in the event of bad weather, the candy will be handed out in the annex hallway. All right. We've got just enough time for another PSA here from the Curry Public Library in Gold Beach. They have a regular event called Memory Cafe Curry. Memory Cafe Curry meets the third Wednesday of every month from 1030 to noon at the Curry Public Library in Gold Beach. Uh, To register for the program, they ask that you email memorycafe at cplib.net or call 541-247-7246. A Memory Cafe is an informal social gathering for older adults living with memory loss as well as their care partners. Care partners may include, but are not limited to, spouses, siblings, children, or friends whose social lives are often just as affected as their loved ones. Memory cafes are designed to be a casual, stress-free gathering to allow care partners the opportunity to relax and socialize with others in a similar situation. Memory Cafe Curry will be staffed by a qualified social service provider, library staff, and volunteers. Yes, indeed. And that took us right up to the flying fickle finger of fate. And it's time to close out this week's show. Before we go, I'd like to give a shout out, as always, to producers Ray and Tom for all their great work making us look and sound good on the radio. And I want to thank you all for tuning into this week's Insider Report. And please make sure to tune in on a daily basis to KCIW 100.7 FM and listen to all the fine shows that they have to offer. You can also catch the fantastic show podcast, including the Insider Report, by going to kciw.org. And hey, while you're there, check out the live streaming that's been going on successfully. Hey, until next week, this is Cousin Bruce. And I'm Kat Liddell. We are signing off. Please support local businesses, keep it real, and spread the love and the peace every chance you get. Hey, we'll we'll see see you out there. there. Bam. Bam! I gotta get a jerky, that's right. Music credits for the preceding show go to kciw.org slash credits.